Hey everyone, thank you for joining us today. Um, we're here with Dr. Tarika Haynes. Um, she's the treasurer of the ASTA Central Florida chapter, um, as well as our travel advisor of the year from ASTA, which is really exciting. Um, we're gonna be talking about the uh, some lesser known Caribbean destinations. Um, we'll give you all just a couple more minutes to pop in before we hand it over to Tarika. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to, um, Use the chat feature. Tell us where you're uh, where you're located. Um, see who's joining us today. There's also um, a Q and A feature. So in the event that you guys have any questions about anything from um, Trika's presentation, uh, she'll be happy to answer them. I see Janine is here from Orlando. Hey Janine, how's it going? Janine, I feel like I just saw you. Oh wait, it was last week. Um, Cool. So thank you all for joining us. Uh, my name is Kyle Bowman. I'm the president of the ASTA Central Florida chapter. I'm filling in for Scott today. He's doing some Cruise World stuff and was unable to attend. So happy to be here. See you all. Hi, Craig. How are you doing? Craig's from Tampa. Um, so Dr. Trika Haynes, as I mentioned, is um, ASTA's Travel Advisor of the Year, also the treasurer of the ASTA Central Florida chapter, and she is going to uh, take you through some lesser known Caribbean destinations that, you know, for those clients who are, you know, often finding themselves back in Punta Cana, back in Jamaica, back in the Cancun, um, these might be small, great alternative islands um, that you should consider um, for your clients' travels. Um, Eldine's here. Hi, Leslie from Orlando. Great. Um, so, uh, Tarika, I'm going to go ahead and leave the presentation to you, and uh, you can share with us everything we need to know about the lesser known Caribbean islands. Thank you all very Thank much. You, Kyle. And hello to everyone who's here. As Kyle mentioned, I'm super excited to talk to you all about some of the lesser known Caribbean islands. I know that some of you may have clients that may say, I don't wanna to go to the Caribbean anymore. I'm tired of going to the Caribbean. So I wanna make sure that you're equipped with the knowledge and information, just in case you have clients that are telling you that, that may not know about some of these gems that we have that are just a short fly away. So, uh, just a, another quick intro. My name is Dr. Tarika. I'm the CEO and founder of Dynamite Travel. I am celebrating 15 years in the business this year. So 2023 has been a great year because not only was I able to celebrate my 15 year anniversary, I also received the 2023 Asked to Travel Advisor of the Year Award earlier this year. Um, I'm also, in addition to travel planning, I'm also a travel journalist and I have a column with I have a post and the compass, and I'm also a contributor to many uh, other media outlets. I've appeared in over 100 uh, articles within the past three years, so I am pretty busy. Uh, my areas of specialty over the 15 years have been Caribbean, Central America, and Mexico. That's where the majority of our clients book. So I'm just happy to be here and share some of this information with you, and hopefully you can in turn share some of this information with your clients. So let's jump right in. Um, I like to call these islands hidden treasures. Um, as travel experts, travel advisors, we're always looking for destinations and experiences that are going to leave our clients more than impressed. We want our clients to continue to come back to us, to refer others. And the only way we can do that is to share some of the gems and hidden treasures that we know about. So within the Caribbean, there's also some gems that you may know about, you may only know a little bit about, you may not know about at all. And so I wanna share some of those with you. Unfortunately, I don't have time to share all of them, but I wanna kind of touch on a few that I think are really good options that you can share with your clients. We're gonna start with Dominica. I'm not sure if any of you guys have heard of this island. It is not to be confused with the Dominican Republic. That is a completely different island and destination. Um, so Dominica, I think, partially because people may, may confuse it with Dominican Republic, um, is overlooked. But it's a great option for your travelers who love eco-travel, who love the outdoors, who love uh, natural, untouched destinations that still have a lot of natural beauty. Uh, if you want to see uh, the beautiful waterfalls, the rainforest, Dominica is a great option. Another thing that um, I'm really proud of Dominica for is 
they don't always talk about it a lot, but they're doing a lot as it relates to su sustainability. There's resorts there that are running mainly off of solar power. They're using a little bit of wind power. So they're doing a lot as it relates to sustainability, which I think is super cool. Um, not a lot of islands in the Caribbean are up to where Dominica is yet, which is surprising because it's a pretty small island. Um, so what are some of the things you can do in Dominica? You have the Emerald Pool and Waterfall. This is a cool spot where uh, there's tons of green foliage around. As you can see in the photo, it also has like uh, a waterfall and a pool where your clients can kind of just hang out, enjoy the waterfall, take a dip in the pool. There's also snorkeling. Uh, there's a special spot called Champagne Reef. They call it Champagne Reef because of the bubbles that you can experience during your uh diving and scuba experience. So that's another kind of cool thing that your clients can experience in Dominica. You also have Trafalgar Falls, another waterfall. As I said before, Dominica has tons of waterfalls. So for your clients who enjoy waterfalls, this is a great place to go. Um, in addition to the falls, there's tons of hiking that you can do. One particular spot is called Boiling Lake. This one's cool because um, in addition to the hike, you also get to experience geothermal activity. Um, so just a lot of natural wonders that you can experience here in Dominica um, or your clients can. Where do we stay when we go to Dominica? As I mentioned, it's a small island, but they do have some pretty nice accommodations. Secret Bay is a top resort there in Dominica that has received a number of awards. If you read any travel publications, at some point you've probably seen Secret Bay in there. Um, pretty much on the higher end as far as price point. Um, so this is a nice option for your luxury travelers. Um, a lot of their um, accommodations have private plunge pools, so you get that privacy. It could make for a great romantic getaway option. Um, we also have Jungle Bay Resort, another eco-luxury resort. Uh, this one has, is known for their spa treatments. So if you have someone that truly enjoys spa experiences, Jungle Bay would be a great option for them. And then we have a couple of more. Uh, Pagua House is another option. Great views, um, top amenities, delicious food. Um, so this is one for foodies. If, if food is important to them, they might want to consider here. And then last but not least is the Intercontinental. This was um, previously at Kempton. So if you know anything about Kempton properties, uh, Inter Intercontinental took this property over, did a couple of renovations, but it's the same property, just now branded as Intercontinental. And what's cool about this property is it's actually situ situated right by um, a World Heritage Site. So you can stay there at the Intercontinental and literally walk to the National Park. It's right next door. So um, for those clients that kind of want both, they want their luxury accommodations and also want to explore in nature, Intercontinental is a great option um, for those clients. So just to wrap things up about Dominica, the key takeaways are that this island is very heavy on sustainability, eco-luxury. This is for your clients who want to hang out outdoors, whether it's snorkeling, diving, hiking, enjoying hot springs, waterfalls. Dominica is a great option um, for you to present to those clients. Uh, let's move on to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, one thing I want to mention about this uh, destination is that it's probably not visited a whole lot because of what it takes to get there. There's a few different ways that you can get there, but essentially you have to fly into another destination and then take a smaller plane to get there, whether that's Barbados or St. Lucia. So it does take a little bit of logistics to get here, but it's a beautiful destination because it's not uh, visited very often. And for those of you who do not know, uh, Sandals is planning to have a resort here. I think the anticipated opening date is spring 2024. So while it's under the radar now, I think with Sandals coming, it's going to bring a lot more eyes to the destination. We'll probably see the numbers go up. And my, my, uh, my guess is that once Sandals is there, other resorts may follow. So... Uh, I would suggest that you all put this on your radar to keep an eye on because I think this is a destination that we're going to see a lot of growth in the next few years.
Um, so St. Vincent, this is your destination for your luxury clients that don't want to be bothered. Uh, they want seclusion, privacy. St. Vincent and the Grenadines is a great option. Um, it's a beautiful destination. It's, a, it's actually a collection of 32 islands. And so you can you can island hop, you can charter a yacht. There's also resorts that you can stay on. So there's a lot of different options with this destination that you can kind of propose to your clients depending on what it is that they want to do. So things to do, what can you do here in this destination? There's a marine park, Tobago Caves Marine Park. Um, again, this is for those that love the water. You can organize a day trip on the water for them or a private yacht charter to uh, snorkel and dive and hang out with the marine life in this area. Um, there's also Petite St. Vincent Retreat. With this option, again, this is for those clients that are literally looking to unplug, don't want Wi-Fi, don't want to watch TV. This is a private island resort that just allows the client to kind of just completely unplug and disconnect and relax, recharge, whatever it is that they want to do. Um, Bikia Bliss, this is another island that you can visit. And this one has cute little villages. So for, for the people that like um, the villages and the arts and the culture, this might be a great uh, spot or things, uh, something to do while you're on in this destination. And then the last thing is Kingstown and the Bot Botanical Gardens. For those who like the outdoors, appreciate the flora, the fauna, the flowers, um, this is a cool place to visit. It also has a local market. And um, the Botanical Gardens is actually one of the oldest in the Western Hemisphere. It's also a little bit of history there, too. Where do we stay? I previously mentioned that Sandals is coming. Uh, but there's also already some properties there now. With the Canoan Estate, um, this is probably a great option for your golfers, for your luxury clients, um, because it does have uh, an 18 hole golf course, white sand beaches. So, this is top notch lu luxury here. You have Palm Island. This is another private island. Those looking for exclusivity, privacy, um, has beachfront accommodations, as well as spa treatments. Mandarin Oriental, you guys probably are familiar with that brand name. Um, this is another option for your clients to stay at. The service is going to be over the top. The suites are going to be well appointed, spa, golf course, everything that your typical luxury client would need, you can probably find at the Mandarin Oriental. And then the last is Young Island Resort. This one does require you to take a boat ride from St. Vincent, but it's so beautiful, tons of natural beauty. This one has private cottages, so it would probably be good for like couples, honeymoon, romantic getaway just to have that privacy and romance and intimacy with, within your own private cottage also has different spa experiences for your clients as well. So St. Vincent and the Grenadines, again, this destination is for your clients who, who want exclusivity. This destination is, you know, not for everybody because some people may not be able to handle unplugging and unwinding, but if, if you have clients that want luxury, but also kind of want to be left alone and don't want a vacation with a lot of other people around, this is a great option. Um, I do think as more resorts come there, that uh, getting there will become easier. So it'll be interesting to see what uh, flight options become available outside of what's already available for this destination. But I think this is a destination that you should try to get to now because I really do think it's going to change quite a bit in the next few years. Um, so I would, you know, push this one up on your client to-do list, especially if your client likes to experience new destinations where a lot of people haven't gone. Next and up, Tarika, we have Saint, it, um, yeah. before you continue, um, it looks like someone commented in the chat from St. Vincent, you can go direct from Miami with American and from New York on Caribbean Airlines. Um, so it okay. looks like there's two ways to get there from yeah, the continental U.S. Are those year round, though? Because I think they may be seasonal. They may be. Um, yeah. They may be, but that was just one of the attendees had had popped that into the chat, so yeah. I wanted to share. And it looks like March 27th for Sandals, so yeah. right around yeah. the corner. Thanks for sharing that. Um, next one is Saba. 
a lot of people might say Saba, but it's actually Saba, pronounce it Saba. This is a, I consider this a bucket list uh, Caribbean destination because it's the smallest uh, Caribbean island and it also has the smallest airstrip in the world. So for people who like adventure, uh, flying in can be very interesting. I've done this flight and I was holding my breath the entire time because <laughs> the airstrip is literally like this big. So uh, it, it was definitely uh, an adventure. Um, there's a few different ways you can get here. You can come, most people come through St. Martin. Um, there's a few other options as well. Um, but it, it's going to be a smaller plane coming in here, uh, regardless of how you get here. Um, so this this destination is great for, I think it's great for solo travelers. Um, you can also send your, your couples here. Um, I, I, I know that weddings are here, but I'm not sure if I would necessarily send a group here. Um, unless it's a small group, just because the island is so small. So, um, but as far as like uh, small groups, couples or solo travelers, I think it's great. This island also has a ton of untouched beauty. This photo in the bottom is actually my photo that I took. So it's just beautiful um, because a lot of people don't come here. And I think the people here just have a lot of a sense of pride. They want to maintain how it is. And to give you an example of that, there is a new hotel coming to Seba either next year or the year after. Um, but I think that Max Rooms is going to be 30, 30 rooms. So all of their hotels can only have so many rooms and they have that way on purpose because they want to maintain the beauty of the island. So they're not looking for any high rise hotels or large hotels. They're trying to keep all of their hotels small for a reason. So things to do in Seba. Um, there's the famous hike. Seba is the highest, uh, has the highest point in the Dutch Caribbean. Um, so the, the mountains are great for hiking. You can see amazing views when you get to the top. Um, and, it, and the cool thing is that you don't have to be an experienced hiker. They have different levels and different trails. So if you're a beginner hiker like me, there's a trail for you too, all the way up to advanced hikers. Um, there's a couple of different villages throughout the island that you can visit and they all have their own character and their own history. So it's fun to just walk around throughout the different villages. The people are super friendly. So when you walk around, people are going to talk to you. They're going to approach you. They're going to ask you if you need a ride, if you want something to eat. So it's a very, very friendly destination, which is why I think it's a great spot for solo travelers. They don't have to feel like they're lost or they're alone. The people are very helpful. Um, and you'll encounter that when you explore throughout the villages. Um, Seba doesn't have true beaches. They have what you see in this photo, which is more like tidal pools. The beaches are very rocky and there's like hardly no sand. So you can get in the water, but if you're, if in your mind you have this, you know, picturesque beach, you're not really going to find it in Seba. Um, this is as close as you'll get to the beach, the photo in the top left corner. What Seba does have is beautiful marine life. They were recently um, awarded a hope, what's called a hope spot from um, Mission Blue organization, which is awarded to different destinations that have truly taken marine life and conservation seriously. And so um, Seba is going to have some of the best diving um, that you'll see in the Caribbean. So if you have clients that are really enjoy diving, uh, this is a great place to do it. You're going to see tons of different marine life here in Seba. If you go diving, you can also snorkel, kayak, um, pretty much any type of water activity that you'd like to do. There's also fishing excursions. So there's a lot of different things to do on the water here in Seba. Um, but in addition to on the water, it also has a pretty strong arts and crafts scene. You have lots of local artists, uh, museums. They have classes where you can make glass jewelry from Venetian glass. So while it's heavy on the marine life and the water activities, it's also very rich in culture and art as well. Where to stay? Um, the Cottage Club Hotel is a nice option for your clients who want something a little bit more upscale. Keep in mind this destination doesn't have a ton of hotels and most of them are small boutique hotels. And I'll be honest, most of them are kind of, you know, average Hotel. So the Cottage Club is probably one of the higher end hotels. And even the Cottage Club is a pretty 
good price point. Um, but uh, yeah, Cottage Club is a is a nice option for your more luxury clients. Um, Save at Arrowwalk is one of the newest hotels there. They have gorgeous views there at Arrowwalk. Um, the accommodations are just kind of average though. Um, they're not going to be as high end as Cottage Club, uh, but the food there is very good. And as you can see in the photo, the views are really good, and it has a great location to into town. Uh, Juliana's is where I would probably put clients that are a little bit uh, younger. It's kind of a hip spot. They do a lot of different activities throughout the week and on the weekends. Um, so it's a great place for people who want a little lively entertainment. Um, this hotel also has really nice sunsets uh, where you can watch the sunset. And then for those clients that may be traveling with small group or family, you can also, there's also a lot of private rentals here on the island. You can do villas, houses um, as well if you opt not to do an actual formal hotel property. Um, this is me with the tourism board representatives. I had a great time when I visited. Um, I think that this is, like I mentioned before, a bucket list destination. Many people have never heard of this island before. So if your clients are looking for somewhere to go that they know no one else has been, this is probably your best bet because um, there's just not a lot of people who heard of this island, let alone visited it. So this is your bucket list destination for your clients that want to do something different and be able to come back and brag to their friends about somewhere that they went. Uh, and then last but not least, we have Nevis. So most of you have probably heard of St. Kitts and you've probably heard of Nevis before as, before as well. But I think that Nevis gets overlooked a lot because of St. Kitts, which is also a great destination. Um, but I think that if more people knew about everything that Nevis had to offer, more people would visit. So um, things to do. I think that Nevis has a little bit more charm. I think because St. Kitts is a bigger destination, some of the cruise lines go there. Um, it doesn't have the same type of charm as Nevis does. And so when your clients visit Nevis, they'll find that that charm, there's lots of history and culture. Um, there's the Golden Rock Inn Gardens, kind of like a bot botanical garden type of thing. Um, it used to be a sugar estate. And it just has tons of greenery and sculptures. It's really nice to experience. Of course, Nevis has the beaches um, where you can, you know, spend a day out there. Maybe you have a picnic. Um, your beach lovers will love this location. And then obviously hiking. For those who love outdoors, love hiking, going up the Nevis Peak is a must. You will see amazing views. And uh, it is a volcano, it's dormant, um, but I think this is a great option for your hikers that love to be outdoors. Where to stay? So Nevis has a combination of higher end properties as well as um, other properties that are not as pricey. Four Seasons is very well known there. Nevis, uh, this is for your clients who just want the best of the best, your higher end luxury clients. Montpellier is also a great um, option. Both of these two resorts have won a number of awards. You've probably seen them in magazines as well. Um, I like Montpellier because it's kind of, it still gives you that luxury, but it's boutique size. So for me personally, um, I feel a little bit more comfortable with the smaller um, size while still getting that luxury service. And then we have a couple more. We have Paradise Beach. This is also a great property, not as luxurious as the other two that I just mentioned. Um, this one is cool because it has private villas. So again, for those who are looking for a little bit more privacy and seclusion, it's a great option. And then last but not least, Golden Rock Inn. This is another boutique property um, that also has private cottages. Um, so these two properties, I think, would I would say are a little bit better for those Again, maybe the honeymooners, the couples, people who want a little bit more privacy as opposed to the other properties, which are going to be a little bit larger. Uh, so Nevis, I think that this is a great destination for maybe they've already been to St. Kitts. Maybe they want something that's a little bit sophisticated, but also able to enjoy some nature. It's kind of a combination of both, where some of the other uh, destinations that we talked about were more uh, rich in nature and outdoors. I think Nevis is a great blend between the two. 
And so, and, and, and remember, if they want to go to St. Kitts, if they want to visit St. St. Visit me this and stay in me this, but they can still take a short boat ride back to St. Kitts. So it's kind of also like a two in one destination because you can kind of experience both. Um, and so I think that's what makes this a special place. Just to sum everything up, um, I think sometimes when we think luxury, we think about the brand names we know, the places we know. But I think we have to also remember that luxury can also be the unexplored, the lesser known, the places we don't know about or haven't been to. And, you know, you may have clients that say they want to visit, you know, Asia and, you know, Greece. Um, I just want us to remind our clients that there are some beautiful destinations that are similar to those ideal locations around the world right here in the Caribbean. And all it takes is for you as the advisor to educate them on that and show them that and increase their awareness on these gyms that we have that are mainly just a short flight away compared to traveling around the world to farther destinations. So I hope that you guys learned something about all of these destinations or at least one of the destinations that I've talked about today. Um, I'm gonna be waiting to hear you guys come back and tell me how you sold uh, one of these destinations to your clients. So I'm excited for you guys and I'm happy to address any questions that you might have. Tarika, yeah, it looks like Craig had a question. Um, do you, the hotels on these islands coordinate scuba dive excursions or do they need to be coordinated through a local dive operator? Great question. So it's going to depend on the destination. Um, for example, I would say that Dominica and Nevis are great as far as going through the hotel. They can help you get it set up. Save is an interesting island because believe it or not, a lot of the work is done by the tourism board. So for example, if you contact the tourism board and say, hey, I have a client that wants to do this, this, and this, they'll help you set it up as opposed to what we're more used to, which is you know the hotel property or a DMC or something, setting it up. And then for uh, St. Vincent's, I would say the hotel as well. The hotels can work with you to get it set up. But uh, same is a little different where the tourism board does a lot of heavy lifting for you, which is great because it also helps you to build that relationship with the tourism board. Um, and you know that they vetted those suppliers and it's kind of gives you an extra sense of confidence. So um, I hope that answered your question. Trika, great, thank you. Um, I'm gonna put you on the spot. Do you happen to have a contact at the Saba Tourism Board that you could drop into the chat? If it's not uh, handy, I can ask Scott to um, to send it out with the with the recording recap. Yeah, I have one. I can pull it up. I can drop an email. Give me one second. That would be wonderful. I think a lot of people would find that beneficial. Um, in the meantime, Amy has shared that she is loving this and that it's a tremendous amount of great information. So thank you very much for oh, um, for for taking the time to do this. Um, Luis had a question um, while you're looking that up. Is it a ferry from St. Kitts to Nevis? And does it operate regularly? Does it have to be booked in advance? There's a You can do a ferry or a water taxi. Me personally, I always like to set stuff up in advance. Um, depending on where you're staying, the resort or hotel can also help you get that set up. But me personally, I like to set stuff up in advance so that it's already taken care of when my clients arrive. But that's just kind of me. So I wouldn't know much about on the spot, I guess is where I'm going with that. Okay, cool. Um, does anyone else have any questions? Feel free to drop them either into the chat or um, the Q&A box regarding um, these destinations that Tarika featured today, or if there are, um, you know, she is an expert in this part of the world, if there are any questions that you have regarding other islands that were not featured, I'm sure she'd be able to happy to give you some, some insight and feedback. I have one contact. I was gonna try to share Sue from Sava for you. Oh, I got it. Perfect. And Leslie it, just it, said it, thank you for the great information. It's a nice change and, to always from always sending clients to the Jamaica, Dominican Republic, or Puerto Rico. And if you have, if you need any other contacts after the the webinar is over, you can I put my contact information on the screen. You can reach out to me. I'm happy. I have contacts for all of these different places. So um 
if you need to contact Perfect. just let me know I just and then really also chat. um one more thing Tarika Craig also had a follow-up um, are the hikes that you mentioned escorted or is it all self-guided Great question. So for most of them, it's either or. You can choose if you if you want to go by yourself. I don't know if I would go by myself, uh, but if you want to go by yourself, you can. What I've seen from most of these destinations is they'll at least give you like a map or they'll tell you which trail to go on if you want. So they'll give you a little bit of guidance or you can set up a guide um, to go with you. That's, so, for example, when I went, I didn't go by myself. I got a guide because I didn't want to get lost in the woods. And it's a, and on one of the hikes, it's a good thing I did because it started pouring. And I probably would have freaked out if I didn't have somebody with me. But we found a little hideout until it stopped raining, like, under a big tree. So I was okay. So you can do either or. Great. Um, does anyone else have any questions before we uh, before we finish up for today? Um, oh, oh, a couple more, Tarika. Good. Um, is St. Vincent's the only island without internet? So let me backtrack. Let me clarify. So St. Vincent's and the Grenadines is a collection of islands. So some of the islands will have internet and some of the islands, let me see if I can go back. It, it, so not the, the entire destination is not unplugged. There's only um where are we? Yeah, so um collectively there's 32 islands. But this particular island right here, Petite St. Vincent Retreat, that one doesn't have any phone or television. But like some of the other areas and the resorts and stuff will have Wi-Fi. So you can choose depending on your client. Like if you know your client does not want to be bothered, doesn't want Wi-Fi or anything, then you can send them to this island. If you know your client, you know, wants to be connected, then you can send them to this island or this resort. So I want to make sure it's clear that the entire destination is not unplugged. There's just certain pockets that it, that you have the option to go to. Similar to the Keys. The Keys has a couple of islands like that, too, where you can go and you unplug. So um, I hope that clears it up. That's perfect. Thank you. Um, Eldine says the Caribbean is a vast array of experiences. This is great information. Yeah, I have to agree. Um, you know, people are consistent or always thinking about the Caribbean as kind of one of those fly in flop destinations where you fly in and then just flop your yourself on the beach for a week and that's all that you do but there's so much more uh there are so many more unique experiences and um you know adventure and hiking and diving and it's not just you know a place to relax there's a lot of a lot of various opportunities um that the clients can can take advantage of in some of these lesser known destinations um let me see um, perfect. So any other questions, feel free to drop them into the Q&A box. Um, oh, there's one more, Tarika. Um, do you know if there are any festivals held on these lesser known islands? There are. Now, I can't tell you the dates offhand, but believe it or not, um, I don't know if all, majority of these, they have carnival. I know at least three of these islands have carnival, um, I don't know the dates offhand. I can find out. But in addition to Carnival, yes, they have. They absolutely have all different types of festivals and events year round. Um, I would highly suggest um, for starting first with the tourism board websites for these because they're the ones that are going to have the events posted. And, um, you know, as you narrow down your options, for example, if you decide, you know, this is the resort I want to proposed to my client you can also obviously check with their resort with the resort to see what they have going on but absolutely like just because these are small islands don't think that they're not having fun and they're not partying they're having carnival they're having food and wine festivals they're having all the things that the larger destinations are having you're probably just not hearing about it as much because they're smaller islands and they don't have the capital and budget to advertise and market like some of these other islands do but they absolutely have events year round for sure I know uh, Nevis has a really, really good food festival, food and wine festival. I think it's in the summer. Don't quote me, but Nevis has a really good food and wine festival. Um, Dominica has a number of uh, different festivals as well as they have a lot of yoga retreats as well throughout the year. Spa retreats, wellness retreats are heavy in Dominica. Saba has a carnival. Saba also has a lot of arts and crafts events year round, um, jazz fest. 
Yeah, there's tons to do on these islands. And, you know, while while I talked a lot about things to do outdoors, I just want to reiterate that all of these islands are also rich in culture and history in the arts. So you can get, there's something for everybody on these islands. You may have to dig a little bit more for your clients to get that information, but there's definitely things to do. Um, and that's what I initially had to do when I first started learning about these destinations. I had clients that were tired of going to the same places, but for whatever reason, whether it's work, school, kids, they couldn't take off two weeks to fly around the world. So I had to start digging and find, okay, where else can I send them? You know, let me start digging a little bit and learn more about this destination and, you know, see if they're like that one. So um, there's things to do for sure. It may take you a little bit more time to research and dig, but I can guarantee you that in the end, if you nail it, your clients will love you and they will tell everybody about you. And you're going to look like, you know, the true expert because some of the stuff they can't find online, right? Not, you know, at first glance, and they're not going to go to the fifth page on Google. So um, you you can present this information to your clients who may know nothing about these destinations and, you know, cater to whatever their preferences are, whether it's things to do, the arts, just relaxing in a luxurious resort. This is your chance to really knock it out of the park. And I think that's just becoming more and more important. I mean, I had a client come in today who was just sick of the internet. And she just, you know, she's just, she was just tired of it. And so she, um, they are looking to us for knowing what's on that fifth page of Google, because they're never going to make it that far. And, you know, being able to identify these unique destinations and these unique experiences that um, they're not going to find anywhere else. So this has been wonderful. Um, what else? Um, anything else? You know, I'm going to, I'm going to, talk about Eldine for a second because she is a native of St. Vincent and the Grenadines yeah. and of course if, if any within 30 seconds of meeting her she will tell you that she's a native of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. <laughs> she's a very passionate very passionate um, about her island and so she had a few things she said St. Vincent does have internet um, and there are two carriers and then she said a uh, carnival and indigenous people celebrations different dates for each food festivals and sailing regattas um, are available on a lot of these islands and then she also said um, when you arrive most islands you'll receive a brochure with all activities indigenous people celebrations are on most islands so uh, a local's perspective there from Eldine and uh, <laughs> from Eldine Marshbank so thank you Eldine for that information that's extremely helpful so um, anyway, um, does anyone else have any questions for Tarika before we um, before we close out the webinar for today? It looks like that is it, Tarika. All right. So thank you all very much for joining in. Um, you know, we really appreciate your participation. If there's anything that you would like to see um, or a supplier or a destination or something you would like featured in our uh, twice monthly webinar webinars, please feel free to email us at cfl at, ast at asta.org or post it into our private Facebook group. We'll be happy to accommodate and, and uh, get you the information that you need to be successful. So um, Tarika, thank you again. I really appreciate um, all of your efforts in putting this together and um, everyone have a great rest of your week. Thank you. Thank you.